it's um, PG USD Board of Education special meeting right now, Monday, May 22nd, 2023, starting at 5 p.m. Welcome to Dr. Sprazier and Andrew, and they said they prefer to be called actually Sally and Eric, so um, so you can choose to do that if you wish, if you're comfortable. And uh, roll call, please. Here. 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 Thank you. And adoption of the agenda is next on the agenda. So do we have any changes? Substitutions, comments on the adoption of the agenda. I'm not seeing any from our board members. And do we have any public comment on our agenda? Lewis, any, I'll put my glasses back on. Okay, great. Lewis is saying no one online would like to comment on the agenda. And I don't see anyone here in person working their way up to the podium. Mm -hmm. So on that, do we have a motion? I'll move to the adopt the agenda as presented. I'll second. Motion made by Clerk McNary, seconded by Trustee Otmar. Can we get a roll call vote, please? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries unanimously. Thank you so much. Moving on, I'm gonna identify the items for closed session. So um, tonight, since it's a special meeting, we just have one item for uh, closed session. So it is that the Board of Education will meet in closed session to consider matters of public employee appointment slash discussion related to the position of superintendent. Do we have any board or public comment on closed session topics? I don't see any board member wishing to comment on closed session topics. And Lewis, anyone online wishing to comment? Nobody online and nobody making their way up to the podium. So on that, we will adjourn to closed session. We do the rest. Foundation. Um, business partners. And last one listed is community, having a community open forum um, where a district translator would be needed. And that would be, um, would that be like a town hall format or? or Very what? similar to that, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And so we have a uh, setting where we give the group uh, an hour or so during a time that's optimal for them, you know, whether it be six to seven in the evening, whatever the case may be, you, you'll help with us in terms of determining that. And mm -hmm. they'll have an opportunity just to do the same things that you'll be doing, that is giving input on the characteristics we'd like to see in the next superintendent. Thank you. And just a, a procedural uh, comment for the meeting tonight. So we have this one action item A on our agenda, right? And it has five, um, five um, sections. What I'd like to do, if it's okay with the board, is as we're discussing each section, go out to the public and see if there's any public comment and come back. So is that okay with the board? Okay. Thank you. So we'll be going out to the public five times and coming back. So um, in light of that, we do have a hand up. Um, Lewis, do you mind unmuting Preston Garvey? And just um, a note while Lewis is unmuting Preston Garvey. So public comment um, is welcomed and encouraged. And um, there is a three minute limit on uh, public comment uh, for each item. And uh, with that, um, that's, I don't really have any anything else on the agenda I can read about that. So that's um, kind of where we are with that. And so Preston Garvey, please go ahead. Okay, um, looks like Preston Garvey has dropped out of the meeting. And so if we see them come back, we will welcome their comments. Um, so board, any discussion, I'm gonna go around um, on this one, uh, Clerk McNary. Um, looking at the groups, I guess a couple that, I mean, I would feel comfortable I don't know that we interface much with service club representatives like Rotary and Kiwanis. I don't want to limit, but I, mm -hmm. I guess I hesitate. I'll start with I hesitate to eliminate anyone because 
given we're a broader community, sure. uh, a gr- we, like, but if we are going to, um, ask specific groups, I guess we will still hit some of them, um, in a community open forum, should they choose to participate. Um, ugh. Yeah, I struggle to limit the list. And perhaps, um, Eric, you can let us know how you go about inviting these, and that might help yeah, guide with Clark McNary. Sure. Yes, they would basically receive an invitation. So the presidents of, if you're talking about the service club specifically, yeah, we reach out to the president and say, you've been invited to attend an, um, a focus group regarding the selection of the superintendent of the Pacific Grove School District. Uh, mm-hmm. Your time will be five o'clock to six o'clock on this particular day. Uh, we uh, invite any representatives from your group. Okay. And mm-hmm. typically the there is a distribution list that the board um, or the district would already have for events that occur within the district that you want to give a broader um, distribution of invitation to. And we use that email list okay. um, for the various letters. And we would send that list to you okay. prior to it going out. Mm-hmm. And that would be one of those things we talked about here. Here's the list of the groups that you said you want to invite. Here's a schedule for them. And, and we're going to move forward with that. Additionally, we also find there's overlapping in groups. Mm-hmm. Many business people or people involved with the chamber are also involved in the service organization. So you do get some of that okay. cross section. So, given that helpful um, information, I at this point don't have a desire to limit. Um, any of the groups that we have on this list and there will be crossover. So Mm -hmm. um, any additions you can think of? I don't have any additions. The only ones I was thinking of is is parents of English learners, but we've got the DLAC and the ELAC committees um, there. And um, I would like to see the student focus groups at all levels as well. That's my feedback for now. And under one of these categories, would the LCAP parent advisory committee fall, maybe parent committee leaders. Um, but it sounds like this is a, we can kind of dig into the the guts of this, if you will, um, at a later time, but this is um, overall just discussing, making sure that this is kind of in line with what we're hoping. So Trustee Otmar. There's nothing that I would want to exclude from this list. Um, Nothing that I can think of specifically to add. I did want to make a comment that if there is any community member that is listening or watching this or comes back and watches this and they have input, um, please reach out because that's also important. We, you know, we're a small group and we may may not think of everything. So, Mm -hmm. um, but beyond that, this is fine for me. And one of the strengths of being small is that we can be nimble and we can kind of take our time and try to um, incorporate everybody. So uh, Trustee Brian Swanson. I'm assuming uh, these groups get lumped together to a certain degree, right? And we're not talking about meetings with 23 or 23 different meetings. Actually are. We are. Yes. Okay. We are. Is there a way that we could lump some of them together? It's like if we're talking about, you know, even sitting down with a group for an hour, you know, that's 23 hours, hour and a, you know, hour and a half. That's what, 34 and a half hours. It's uh, that adds up. And, and I think some of these groups could be pretty small or even non-existent um, when it comes to somebody wanting to participate. Has that happened in the past where you've combined groups? Yes, yes, it has. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And, and typically the groups are, uh, are with us for about 30 minutes. So okay. 30 minutes per group. And typically, all groups, whether it be the board, whether it be the students, whether it be... I'm sorry to interrupt you, Eric. Do you mind turning on? There you are. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, typically, uh, the sessions are 30 minutes long. And all groups, whether it be the board, students, parents, community members, are going to be asked three basic questions. Mm. The first question is, what are the characteristics you want to see in your next superintendent? The second question is going to be, or prompt will be, what are the strengths of the district? And that's where we tell everyone, brag. Brag about your district. And because we want to be able to attract people based on some of the great things that are happening here. And the third one is, what are the areas of improvement or challenges that the district is facing? 
So everybody gets those same three questions and that's how we're able to triangulate the information, how we're able to develop trends and so on from that point. Okay, all right. And they know those questions in advance so okay. that they can be prepared for yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, I'm so glad you're here to facilitate all of this. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so let me, let's see if there's anyone, um, the individual coming back to the public. Could, could I jump in with thoughts? Please before? go ahead, Elliot. Sorry. Um, so yeah, I, I given that if this is potentially 23 different um, sessions, I would suggest we do some grouping, you know, thinking of particularly the um, three and four, since we don't have a difference between cabinet leadership team per se. But mm -hmm. I also, you know, I was thinking the same with some of the service club representatives, potentially with city council members, city staff, or, and then potentially booster groups, but with the educational foundations, just because of our small community. I mean, I'm fine with the invites going out, just recognizing we might have small numbers of people responding. Um, the only, the other thing I was going to say is, you know, we do have through Synergy, the ability to reach out to parents directly as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I would like to reach out to all parents, not just whether it's inviting to the community open forum or inviting them to a parent group, you know, including if possible, parents that have left the district. Because I know that might not be as targeted, but I, I am really curious to hear from those folks that have left, left the district, they might be able to shed light on some of the challenges that are more opaque than others. Yeah, excellent point, Elliot. Yeah. Uh, how how far would you? Oh, Lewis. You yeah. of course you can make up. Just please come up to the podium and turn on the mic, and you've got three minutes. So, the real question is: I know we want to include everyone's questions and opinions. At what point do you start to see diminishing returns, where you hear the same thing over and over again from the same type of people? If you know what I mean. That it's very common that themes will start being developed, and that's really what we are seeking. We want to see what the major themes are for your district, what the major interests are in terms of leadership style. Um, experiential background becomes important to some people as well. So we look for those themes, and we hope that they do emerge through that. Mm -hmm. So we will hear a lot of the same things over. And there's some basic leadership qualities that are just going to be mentioned because they define leadership. Thank you. And part of the value in going through these steps is to make sure everyone feels heard, even if there is repetition, Absolutely. right? Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And we'll be triangulating not only the focus groups, looking at those trends, but also looking at the trends on the online survey and getting a sense of, okay, here are people who may not be affiliated to your point, uh, Trustee Hazen, uh, who have left the district, or who, in some cases, you may get a teacher who's in a focus group as a teacher, but they want to go on the online survey as a parent. Mm -hmm. And there are different uh, leadership styles and characteristics they want to see depending on their roles. And so you'll get some of that as well. Mm -hmm. And the themes begin to define the position description and the profile and are extremely important as we talk to potential applicants because we want them to know as much about um, the interests of the district so that they can also assess how they think their skills and, and their leadership experience matches what your needs are. Thank you. And so um, for this list, because it does sound like there's valuable input actually kind of coming about with this discussion, do you want us to continue discussing this list or would you like us to email you our input or how would you like to foster that? Well, we're, I, we're here at the Request to the board, what's, what's, the, what's your typical way of handling these types of things? And we want to make sure that you're comfortable with that. We're very comfortable accepting and having a conversation now, knowing mm -hmm. that yeah, that uh, it's, it's like many other things. You'll go home and think, oh, I should have said this. Mm -hmm. I wanted to add this. And so we, maybe we do a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. I have a question for Mandy. Um, do Does the district have a kind of... Um, batch list that they send out uh, emails to the community? Yes, please. <laughs> I'll try not to pass out. Yes. Um, we do. We have a, a, it's a board packet distribution list and it's, I mean, I can't remember everything off the top of my head, but it's like the police department. There's um, realtors that have asked to be on it. There's um, city 
officials, and I'm sure I'm missing a bunch of people. Okay. But that's sort of the, it's not, it's, if you, if you're just a community member and you've reached out to be on a distribution list, it's not for that. It's for board packet distribution. Yeah. Okay. So that's the list you'd be working yeah. from. Okay. That's, and so we might need to grow it. When she mentioned that. Okay. Can, Can I ask a, a quick question? Is, is that specific to Pacific Grove yeah. residents though? Okay. Thank you, Mandy. All right. And to, to continue the conversation, uh, Trustee Hazen, were you done? Yeah, just one quick clarification is I'm perfectly also happy sending it out to 23 plus groups and then potentially grouping post hoc. Yes. Um, so that I don't, I'm not trying to scratch or combine. Okay. Okay. I'm just trying to say, I, I would, I do think there's some advantage if there's specific groups that would benefit from a one on one where they could, like, like a parents that have left the district might want to be able to grieve a bit and not have other parents that are in the district necessarily listening to that. So there might, you know, there might be some sensitivity matters like mm -hmm. that too, just to take into account. And most typically a group that we want to have um, isolated in terms of comments would be your association groups, your staff members. Those are very important to have in more job alike or interest alike groups. And the meetings would be in public. They would be um, broadcast and recorded just like this. No, no, no. Tell and me fact, more. We, we disinvite the board basically to those meetings. Oh, okay. The board's not part of it. Excellent. No, no. Okay. It's not part you of know. that. Okay, thank you for clarifying yes. that. Thank yes. you so much. And again, I, I keep going back to this 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 uh, part of the process. Even when we do bring in, let's just say the teacher teaching staff, there are going to be people in this who are in the attendance who are there really just to listen to see what their colleagues have to say, mm -hmm. and then they will go on the online survey also, and that's mm -hmm. where they'll put their input because not everyone's comfortable speaking, no matter how large or small the group is. And so there are opportunities for them to feel, uh, to respond in a place where they're most comfortable. Thank you for clarifying. So this, these are interactions of, these are groups that, that you, leadership associates, will be facilitating, right. organizing, and then um, garnering, a, creating a summary for the board from it. Yes. Thank yes. you so much. Okay. Um, Dr. Hazen, do you feel good? Okay. Um, Clerk McNary? How are you feeling on this? Any questions or comments? Um, I think I've already given my input. So I'm feeling comfortable with moving forward and I would defer to our experts as far as how to group people and um, figure out what works as far as the focus groups. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Trustee Otmar? Um, as much as I would be interested in being at those uh, groups, I think it is fantastic that we're not there because people can be candid and honest and that's what we want. So um, this is great. I we do. Nothing further. We yeah. do. And to clarify yet again, we've brought it up in um, other meetings, but the survey can be anonymous or is anonymous, it's correct? Anonymous. It is anonymous. So anonymous. for anyone listening who has a concern about yeah. that. Okay. Uh, Trustee Brian Swanson. Uh, have at it. I just want to clarify one thing since we're disinvited <laughs> which is, is great it's great i just want i want to make sure that everybody on the board understands it's like that's it's like we don't go it's like it's not it's beyond like you're not invited it's like you don't show up either uh, to something that we're not invited to so it's like you guys do your stuff you take your notes you come back to us with the information that you've gathered and um uh, yeah i'm fine with that Thank you for that. Okay, everyone feel comfortable with moving on from this topic, including um, Eric and Sally. Do you feel comfortable? Okay, thank you so much for the discussion. I'm going to bounce over to the computer and see if there's anyone. Lewis, you don't see anyone who wants to comment. Okay, do we have anyone um, here in the public who would like to come up and comment at the podium? Any? Yes, we do. Excellent. I know. <laughs> Hi. Um, I, I just one thought came to mind is when you're doing these, are they going to be through the summer then? And is that a factor in terms of how many people are going to be around to participate? We will not, we will do the focus groups when people are back in person, in person or, or back in town, whether we do uh, Zooms, depending on the nature of the group and or in person, but we won't start that part of it until the fall. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that, Beth. Okay, we're going to move on now to number two, board slash search firm protocols during the search. So part of that has to do with things such as uh, looking at the timeline. 
in, in uh, moving towards that. And, and that is, we recognize that the original timeline is not doable in its current state because school is going to be out and so on. And so we're looking at the possibility of doing a few things. One being um, getting the online survey out ASAP this week and extending it for at least two and a half to three weeks, if not longer. And, or so that those who will be leaving town will have ample opportunity to participate because that is one of the most uh, important uh, pieces of data that we do collect because that is a place where people are going to be very candid uh, with their ideas and thoughts. Mm -hmm. And if I might just add the rationale for moving forward with the online survey is that there is perhaps a peak of interest in the fact that there is an opening at this point in time. And so we want to capture that as well. Uh, sometimes after a summer time, people kind of change what their areas of interest might be. So we want to make sure that we capture that at this time. And so, as, and the other aspect of this online survey is, well, we'd like to know if there are any languages other than English that you're interested in having us uh, publicize. So that's a discussion for the board. Sure. Okay, I'll start with Trustee Otmar. Um, absolutely, any language that is spoken in our district, I think it needs to be translated into. I mean, everyone should be able to access this equally. So um, how we gather that information, um, same, I guess, with um, any notification that would go out that needs to be translated. I think we can kind of defer to that. Yeah, and so we do have um, our our um, software for that we a re registration and a uh, student organization, you know, mm -hmm. organization software that Lewis is borderline versed in. He's actually our tech director, not our student tech director. But um, yeah, so um, so Trustee Atmar, you're saying every district, every language, which might be over close to two dozen languages. And when you say translated to, do you mean, yeah, can you elaborate on that, Sally? Yeah. We have it in a number of languages, but I don't know that we would have it in 12 languages. So no. <laughs> typically districts do what their requirement is for the percentage of speaking mm -hmm. are certain, and, and some languages may not even have a written component. Um, I don't know if that's the case with some of them here, but I know we have it in Punjabi, we have it in Mandarin, and Spanish, Spanish, of course. And, mm -hmm. uh, so we have it in a number of different languages. We've had it translated into some others, but sometimes we need to use uh, district translators to put it into um, that form. And our district software does a you know computer generated okay. translation for the students. Mandy, am I speaking out? This is okay. Catapult. Catapult translates automatically depending on which language the family has registered as their primary la okay, home language. That, okay. So if we yes, could please, work with Mandy to know what languages. Just, that's the percentage. So to communicate with students, we use our student information system. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know the capabilities of the translation. Um, to communicate with parents, we use Catapult, which pulls data from our student information system, it pulls the parents' emails, and, mm -hmm. and that does some basic translation as well. I don't know exactly what languages they hit. Mm -hmm. Typically, when you are sending information out, what languages do you use? English. English. Okay. 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 Thanks. And we do um, pay uh, translators to, for instance, um, um, real live person translate like our um, high school catalog mm -hmm. for instance mm -hmm. uh, things like that but it's in Spanish it's we only pay for that to be in Spanish mm -hmm. yeah um uh, trustee Otmore are you okay if I move on to trustee Brian Swanson or did you want to continue I think I'd like additional information I just don't want a, a member of our community especially a parent to be left out mm -hmm. um just just because of a um you know a a gap. So if there's a way to run that and get the data on on um, like primary languages in the households in our district, I'd appreciate that. That's all I have. Thank you. And we'll come back to after the discussion. So uh, Trustee Brian Swanson. Can, can, can we send a message out in those other languages 
just a basic statement to begin with saying if you are interested in this and need a translation get back to us and we can then provide that for them just looking for a, a possible solution to that i think if we direct staff to kind of um investigate that as long if the board wants to give direction that that's important to us that we don't have anyone left out or at least give the opportunity then staff can can follow up on that should we ask josh jordan to join us or we can make notes to i think we should just make a note of it mandy you're nodding ask josh jordan to join us you've got a note you're noting that you have a note okay all right so we've got that note on here um dr hazen no, I'm in agreement with, with what's been said. I like the idea of having a question that says if you would like another language, and ideally that could be translatable more easily than a full survey mm -hmm. so that someone could feel comfortable and say, I didn't understand the survey, I'd like in another language. Clerk McNary. Oh, I'll come back. Yep. Yeah, I, I like the idea of directing staff to do oh. a little more inquiry into the primary languages for families before we... Um, send out a note to families and then ask them what their language of origin is. I think we're creating maybe more work than we have to, um, maybe some investigation and then see what makes sense as the next step. Okay. We should have that data. I'm right. sure we do. I'm sure we right. do. Yeah. Yeah. Trustee Otmar, you had something? Yeah. I think my concern with sending the question out would just be that it's then two responses. Mm -hmm. yep. So, you yep. know, I mean, we're all busy and things slip off radars and they answer one question and then, oh, here comes the email in my language, but now I'm busy. So it's, I think as concise as we could make it, it's ideal. If it can't work that way, then I think the question, just sort of a generic question is a great solution to that. Yes, Mandy, please come to the podium or um, grab a mic. If you have a mic. question is are you interested because i think it has like our student information system is what's your primary language at home versus do you speak english kind of thing so i think a lot of people with a different primary language at home might still speak english and it's not as much of an issue so we can get you statistics from the student information system on saying what's your primary language at home i don't know if we have do you also speak english so that would be So Mandy, is, yeah. Mandy uh, was asking if we want to know percentages of what um, what percentage of student households speak certain languages, because I think Eric and Sally were coming at it from a point of the state dictates if you have a certain percentage of students who speak a certain language, then you automatically are obligated to provide um, communications in that language. And so if I remember correctly, we don't actually have that percentage here in our district, um, but I don't want to misspeak and have you take that and um, and uh, think that it's the fact. So um, we can get back to you on that. Can I, we could post it in the languages that we have. And if no one responds, no one responds. Mm -hmm. So at our uh, at our last board meeting, we approved contracts for um, a language line service or language services for 504s and conferences. Mm -hmm. So I think that may be data we could use because parents that might need a translator for conferences would also need translation for um, possible questionnaires. So if we're able to access that information, um, that could be something that might be helpful. It could add to it, but it could also leave folks out because if a family speaks another language but doesn't have a child who qualifies for IEPs or 504. Well, I think it also said for conferences, parent-teacher conferences. Yeah. I don't know how far to okay. the upper grade that would go, but um, definitely, sort of definitely would give us some clues. Yeah. Okay. So um, we will direct staff because I have a feeling there's probably a staff member who has a really quick, easy answer to this. Um, since this is not our day to day, what we do, what we do with. Um, so Mandy, you're, you've taken a note to reach out to staff on that. Do you have clear direction or would you like us to reiterate? Well, Sure. So, um, so what we're looking for is to not leave any family out when it comes to um, garnering uh, feedback from them for the superintendent search. 
So that's what we're asking staff is um, how they feel the, the kind of the best approach would be to make sure that we're addressing every family with their language. And it does sound like we do have a limitation with the, I don't want to say limitation with leadership associates, but you have a certain um, amount of uh, translations already done. We have, I'd yes. say five or six already. And if, I mean, those, it doesn't cost anything to post them on your website. Mm -hmm. and no one responds to them. Mm -hmm. So we could go that route as well. So maybe what we do is we wait and work with staff to get a sense of what mm -hmm. are the primary languages. Mm -hmm. uh, also, and then use what we have to say, okay, are we in alignment? Where are we misaligned? And then how do we go about uh, making some alignment sure. to, to yeah. that and then get that back to you? Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. righty. Yes, Yes, Lewis, you're welcome to ask one more. And is there anyone online who wants to ask one more? Please raise your hand. We'll get to you. Do you have your own survey tool or is that something we would provide? We have the tool. <laughs> Thank you, Sally. Okay. Um, so, and um, so item number two, board search for protocols during the search. Do, do you feel that we've completed that or do you have anything else? There are a couple of things we still want to go over and part of it has to do with one of the protocols is that we publicize the um, position in the ETCAL, which is the California Association of uh, School Administrators uh, uh, publication. And so that's our primary source. And that's where people will know about it. That information will be posted. They actually publish it on, on several uh, Mondays, typically every other Monday. Uh, looking at the summer, obviously there's some changes. And so we're looking at the possibility of putting in ETCAL for a publication on August 7th and a publication on um, the 21st. Mm -hmm. We would also put that information on your website so that if people are looking at your website, it will pop up to say superintendent search, Ed Cal. It will also be on our website when people, because we basically will do the following is that when we have openings, we have a distribution list of- 195. <laughs> yeah. And so we send, we also do a blast say this position is open along the way. So we're looking at if we were to uh, do the first publication on the 7th of August, and then do another publication on the 21st of August, and then have the position closed on September 7th. That's, that's uh, more than enough time for candidates to uh, see the publications, as well as to be able to submit applications. And we believe that would also give us the opportunity to have those in-face or in-person um, meetings with your staff so that we would have their input before right. the filing closes. We would be looking more in the August timeframe for those. Because mm -hmm. I believe your, your first day of school somewhere around the 9th, I believe, of August. I think that's when it is. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Trustee Bryan's one, or Sorry, you're right. Uh, would you like me to repeat those dates? Uh, August 7, 21, and what was the last one? It would close on September, September. 7. Okay. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Trustee Brian Swanson, any questions? Um, what, are, what are your thoughts on, like, on a, on a national level? Are people looking at, at EdCal as well? Yes. Absolutely that. We also have have uh, members or partners who also are in national organizations. So we get it out that way as well. And they're probably on your 800 plus yeah, exactly. uh, email list. Yeah. So yes, I we will guarantee you will get many uh, out of state or national uh, attention and people will be applying. In most of our searches, we have people who are applying from out of state. Okay. And again, this being a very, very destination district for superintendents, you're going to have a wide uh, range of people who will be applying for the position itself. Okay, great. That's all I have on this one for the moment, at least. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Dr. Hazen. Yeah, nothing more to add, add on that about the dates. You know, my main question is 
is it more useful to have the ads further spaced out in your experience? I mean, I, I tend to trust you guys. <laughs> you have a lot more experience than this than I do. So this actually is spaced out more than than normal because typically they are running on consecutive Mondays. And so this extends, expands it by having it the, the, the 7th and the uh, 21st. It does not run August 14th. Or yeah. We would have suggested the back-to-back. Mm -hmm. -back. Yeah. Clerk McNary? I think that timeline feels reasonable and it'll allow us then to get the in-person feedback when people have returned in the fall because I want to make sure we're having an opportunity to incorporate that. So, um, yeah. Okay, Trustee Otmar? Uh, with me, the dates are fine. Um, my question would be that if we have a pool of applicants and there's not an applicant that we feel fit to fill the position, um, do we just repeat the cycle then and it's spaced out the same or what, what happens at that point? Typically what would happen is, and it depends on, there's several different types of searches. So I'm gonna take you through just a couple. This is the typical search. About two and a half, three months, we advertise, get applications, we uh, bring the candidates who we believe fit the, the position description to you. You guys just select the top three to five candidates. I'm just throwing a number out there. Those that's our typical numbers, and then we interview. There are also situations where we decide we're going to do what's called a targeted search. And a targeted search says we see three strong candidates, maybe some that you've identified, et cetera, for this position. And we think we need to stick within those three because they really are the ones that nail what the community, what the staff, and what the board said that they wanted. And so we limit it to that along the way. And then there's some in which we basically just interview one person. Sometimes the board says we interview one person. And in each of those cases, what Leadership Associates does is if we don't believe we have enough quality candidates for you, we will tell you we want to extend it. And that includes uh, publicizing it ag ag again. We keep, keep the community input. We don't do that over again because information is information. People had an opportunity to, to uh, speak on it. But for the process itself, if we need to go back out again, we will tell you, yes, we're going to put another advertisement in at Cal. We are going to put it on your website again to say that it's been extended and that we'll do that for sure. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. And um, as far as earlier, you said that when we would um, collect the data from the surveys, that that would help create the job description. Um, if we're doing surveys in the fall, how will there be a posting on 8-7? We're doing the online survey actually starting this so week. So you'll use that initial yes, data. Yes, exactly. Okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay, that's my questions. Thank you. Uh, let's see, Trustee Brian Swanson, do we already start with you? So yep. you're good on this? Okay, let's go out to the public and see if there's any questions, comments. Lewis, looks like there's no one who would like to comment right now. Anyone here in person who would like to comment? Okay, I don't see. Okay, I don't see anyone who would like to comment. All right. Um, back to you, Eric and Sally. Yes. Yes. And so in September, once the position closes, I mentioned that the next step is for us to. to um, bring you candidates. And so we need to select a date in September in which we will have a about a two and a half hour meeting. In that particular meeting, we will bring you all of the applications. And in fact, what we'll do first is once it closes, we have done our, we'll be vetting the, the candidates along the way. We're going to actually, just before we meet with you to review all of the candidates, we're going to send you a portal. And that portal will allow you to take a look at the applications before that particular meeting. My only caution to that is that keeping in mind our notes, our references won't be a part of that process. So you're going to be getting raw data. Here's their application. Here are their reference letters. Here's their cover letter. 
but it will give you a feel of, of the candidates themselves and you get a sense of oh who did apply you know are they out of state are they local to the region are they from other parts of the state and so on and it will pique your curiosity and say i want to know more about this particular candidate we will take them and put them in we believe are categories to say here are the ones that actually meet pretty strongly the uh, position description, the, the items, the trends that your community said that they want to see. Here are the ones that are pretty close, pretty close. And then here are the ones we're going to say that uh, they don't meet it at all for a variety of reasons. But that will help you also to be able to, as you're going through your process of reviewing the applications, it gives you an opportunity to say, well, they put these in the top group. I'll be interested to see, have some questions about that. Or this person who I thought was really great is in the second group. And so let's have some conversations about that. This is your search. I said that you will have three to five candidates. That's our standard number. We've gone more and we've gone less. So it's, it's not a case where it's a cookie cutter pr uh, process. We as a group will sit down and decide here are the number of people that we believe we want to interview for this process. So that being said, yeah, yeah. So we're looking at the last week in September. <clears throat> so board, we have uh, board meetings in September. I'm online trying to find our September meetings, but it only goes to June, 2023 so far. So Mandy, do you have the board calendar? President Carolyn. It should yeah. be the seventh. It's the yeah. first, and we meet on the first and third Thursdays, so it would be the seventh and the twenty-first. And we added a special meeting on the fourteenth, I believe. Okay. Yeah. I so that if we're sticking to Thursdays, I'm not sure what the board's preference is, but that would leave the twenty-eighth or any other day that last week that. You're available. Could it be combined with a special board meeting or is that, do we feel that's already a full agenda? Packed I think this is going to be a whole separate session. They're saying two and a half hours given. We also do the interview questions on that. So that sounds finalizes. like it's going to be a full docket. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think I heard Sally say maybe the last week in September. September. Mm -hmm. uh, we do typically meet on Thursdays. Doesn't mean we have to. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we have a special meeting on a Saturday, but I don't think that that probably feels right. Um, so, hmm. Mandy, do you mind just confirming that? Fourteen and twenty-one. Those are the dates that we have for our yearly calendar. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you for that. You could get bingo with the twenty-eight. <laughs> <laughs> we could get bingo, blackout bingo. Um, yeah, Dr. Hazen, what do you think about September 28th in the. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. No, I, I mean, frankly, I'm looking at it looks like it's the board self evaluation is what's on our September 14th. Or 14th. Mm -hmm. 14th. I would be more keen to try to have it be two sessions on that day, potentially. If that wouldn't exhaust folks, then trying to do five weeks in a row personally. If we close on the seventh, though, we will need time to do reference review, and one week would not provide for that. Okay. Okay, Clerk McNary, how do you feel about the twenty eighth? Twenty eighth works for me. Okay, uh, uh, Trustee Elmar. Uh, I would prefer not to have five meetings in a row because right. I feel like by the fourth meeting, this is uh, really very important and I don't want to be burned out. So if there's a way that we can, I don't see another way to adjust it. I mean, it's, it's, it is what it has to be, but I think um, even by the fourth meeting, I think we're all going to be a little bit. <laughs> a bit tired if i could offer i mean we could reschedule if it's not too late the board self-evaluation did they just so, said they're going to need additional time from the i understand i'm saying so we just remove it or not remove it but it reschedule that to give us a break so that we don't have five in a row mm -hmm. um, but we I'd still do that. that i would i would prefer that um i'd like to pretend that i'd be fine with five meetings in a row but 
Um, that won't help anybody I think if I'm just saying that. So I would prefer to reschedule the self-evaluation. So we can probably address the self-evaluation meeting at a regular board meeting, but for purposes of the calendar tonight, I think all we're, we can look at is the leadership associate stuff. And then maybe at the next board meeting, mm -hmm. when we're on our open agenda and we're talking about the future calendar, if someone wants to bring up moving the self-evaluation date to another date, because we will have added potentially a meeting on the 28th, I think that would be the appropriate time. Yeah, Jen's right. I agree. Just because it's not agendized to talk about the other right. calendar items. So, um, okay, then I am in favor. Five <laughs> <laughs> <Talk> in a row. <laughs> so for a brief, for a brief moment, okay. there may be five in a row. Um, Trustee Brian Swanson. I'm I'm in favor of that approach. It's just yeah, make sure that we have that we deal with it at the next meeting and and uh, with the selfie veil and bounce that somewhere. Okay, and um, that what is the name of that meeting? It is the selection selection meeting. Yeah, candidate selection candidate selection committee committee meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to call it Selection Board of Ed. Thank you so much. May um, I ask a clarifying question? Sure. Yeah. Is that an open session or closed session since closed. we're reviewing applications? Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The entire? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And typically, and um, so we're. I'm thinking we'll do that in the evening. Is that what you're thinking timing-wise? Is that typically an evening meeting? We've done it all throughout the day, so whatever works for the board. Okay, board. Um, Trustee Brian Swanson. What's the question? He, what time? Oh, uh, regular board meeting time. Yeah. Okay. And are, uh, remind me, are the can will the candidates be there or no? This nope. is just our yes, our work, our yep. paperwork. Yep. Okay. Um, Dr. Hazen, evening meeting. Okay with that? Yep. Okay. Clerk McNary. Evening is fine. Trustee Otmar. Okay. So evening it is. So shall we aim for five o'clock? Mm -hmm. And Dr. Hazen, are you able to get back in time for those? Or do you work? I don't know. Do you work from home? No, no, I do. Oh. I work. Um, I will try my best. But if I get a little late, I'm fine with folks starting. No, no, I think five is fine. I'll, I'll do my best. I mean, okay. right now, that far out, it's so hard for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I yeah, I would. I would love for us to consider it more holistically. Um, but I, right now, five o'clock start times have been OK because I've been getting to work earlier. OK. Thank you, Brian. Okay, I will go out to the public, even though this one is pretty much decided upon, but we do still want to include the public in any part of this meeting that we can. So, um, Lewis, I don't see anybody, do you? No. All right. And I don't see anyone in, in person who wants to come up and speak. So I'll hand it back to you. Eric probably will want me to take this next one because we're going to be talking <laughs> about one more meeting very close to that time that will be an full day meeting okay. to interview candidates. Okay. Okay. Um, and that often is on a Saturday, mm -hmm. sometimes on a Friday. It depends on the board's um, work schedule or interest. Uh, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. typically that would be like the um, at least a week after that meeting, like the October 7th date. And these sorry, dates are important because we post them. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Man, okay, so for anyone uh, not who couldn't hear Mandy, Mandy was saying that's the beginning of our fall break. Um, October seventh is the beginning. Okay, go ahead, Elliot. I think the fall break is the week after of the calendar is posted online, but we can. The only reason I, I just booked a trip for the fifteenth tonight. <laughs> oh. so if I'm wrong. It's cancelable, but I'll revisit that now. I think I think that one potentially could be available. But let the seventh. Double check. Seven works. Okay. And we need, can we get a district calendar or is this the last meeting that we're talking about this, setting tonight? Okay. Yes. 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 Yeah. This okay. is the last. Yes. And this is right after, again, the candidate selection. We need about a week to 10 days. And what basically happens there is at the candidate selection meeting, we identify who we're going to invite for an interview, and then we'll give them this date. Of the, the seventh is the butterfly parade. Yeah. October 7th. So that is, oh, no. we should have but then according to the 2324 online calendar, um, it is the 16th to 19th, but we do want to avoid the 7th. Absolutely. And that is typically the first Saturday in October. So I think that date's probably right. 
Oh, thank you. Can okay. Can you zoom it in? Can't see it. Never mind. I'll turn around. Okay. All right. To so, clarify, you said seven to ten days after nine twenty eight. Correct. Okay. And we tend to go for uh, weekend days because they're, they're full day, but that's uh -huh. generally for the the boards. Boards, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. With you know, work schedules sure. and that, okay. we're available other I days see. too. But we certainly don't want to interfere you know, okay. with a major local event. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest, I, I could take off the sixth from work and with this far in advance notice, but I, that's easier potentially for me than others. So I want to make sure that would be something the other whole board would be able to do this far in advance. We do have a board meeting on the fifth. So that will be likely a, the night of the fifth. Yeah. The night. Yeah. Something to consider. He's gone on the 15th. Mm -hmm. What about the Friday the 13th? Friday the 13th. That's what I. Okay, so we'll go around. So, um, Trustee Dr. Hazen, Friday the thirteenth of October. Yeah, that that is open on my calendar currently. So, yeah, I think that should work. Okay, uh, Clerk McNary, I can do Friday the thirteenth. Trustee Otmar, I'd prefer not the thirteenth because it is the um, spring break just after that. So, you know, I'm we may be out of town. So, can we look at a um, would a Monday work for you guys? Could we do Monday the 9th? Is, is anybody up for that? I have a dentist appointment I can change. Okay. Oops. Monday the 9th is to change anything day. to make oh, Indigenous People's Day. And Indigenous nope. People's Day. Thank you. Indigenous People's Day. I'm just looking um, at the calendar and reading. Sorry, not it's all good. your judgment. <laughs> so October 9th, Monday, October 9th on the table? No. If it's a, if it's a, I have to double check. If it's a federal holiday, I, I yeah, actually, that could be, but if it's a three-day weekend, I might yeah, not be able to. Yes. Okay. More, yeah. What What was the first day you said it was? The second was Indigenous Peoples Day. What was the first day? A previously known as Columbus. It's, it's, oh, yes, it's that one. okay. All right. Still in my calendar is. Is, that a, is it a holiday? Like, I'm just saying like a school holiday. I don't see it on the calendar. There is school. So I'm okay meeting on that day. How about, oh, you're okay with the ninth? I'm fine with the ninth. I don't know if there's a matter with Indigenous Peoples Day, but no, are you off? Elliot's oh. or Trustee Hazen's availability? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's just, if it's a three-day weekend, sometimes we, that's, those are, we will target specific things, but mm -hmm. um, so it's a little trickier for me than taking the day off, if that makes sense. But, I, but actually, I mean, I don't know that it is. how about National Bosses so. Day on October 16th? That's, that's in the Monday. middle of our break. break. It's probably gone. I would suggest we try for the ninth, and I can because actually, if schools are still in session, I, I, need, I need to double check. For example, if my wife has the ninth off and the mm -hmm. schools are in session, that is a great opportunity for a date day, and I those come well, like those leap are years. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to get so, in the way of that. Yeah, but let me. I know we need a decision tonight, so I'll try to gather information. Yeah, and we need to hire superintendent, so the ninth might might be it. Okay, so. Um, so loosely we're kicking around the ninth, October yeah. 9th, Monday. Okay. Okay. And it will be an all day thing. I can yes. change my dentist appointment. No problem. Mm -hmm. Um, did we hear from all the trustees on this one? Any, I have a question. So define all day. So, cause we're interviewing one person at this point. Well, right? if you're interviewing one person, it would be a half day would probably be. Yeah, more than, yeah, more than adequate. More than adequate. But if you're doing three, there's uh, the interviews. So it could are, be. It could it, be multiple. It, it people. It could be really yes. Know, it could so. be longer. It could be short. It depends on how many you select to actually interview. Got it. Okay. All right. Okay. So we have Go tentatively ahead, the ninth. Tentatively the ninth. Yes. And at that particular interview, we typically do not do it on 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 site or at a school site, we mm -hmm. typically select a, either a building within, within your community. Sometimes it's a library, sometimes it's a hotel, sometimes it's a place that has a conference room. Okay. Is what we typically do. We'll be working with Mandy, our admin in terms of finding location. But if you, right now we can have a conversation, if there are places in which you know that we can maybe start looking at to secure. And do you mind just, um 
letting us know the reason why to not do it on site? There's some confidentiality. If the district is open okay. on Saturdays, if the district isn't open, it, that is fine. But um, just for candidate confidentiality. Sure, no that? problem. Um, I just want it so that the public knows. So, um, so we could do, I don't know, do we want to toss out ideas, maybe like reach out to Silomar Conference Center. I think we want to stay away from churches. Uh, churches always have facilities, but it just doesn't feel right. So um, maybe a Silomar Conference Center. Um, Elliot, any ideas? Um, yeah, we may have access to a place. It does have to be within city limits or no? Typically, we like to. Within district limits. With district, yeah, district limits. Spanish Bay? Scratch that then. I mean, that's a great idea. Yeah, Although but... that's a little tricky because there's a gate entrance fee and all these other things that can kind of hinder. I'm sorry, Elliot, did you have a place you had an idea? Not okay. not within district limits. So I was trying to rack my brain a bit, but um okay. Of course, hotels are plentiful with yes, Beth? Their chambers. Or... Well, we did ours at Meals on Wheels. Oh and Meals on Wheels. Very ex you know, accessible with a conference. They are lovely. I actually know the folks down there. I could reach out if we wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, but let's go around and make sure everyone's comfortable with that. Uh, Clerk McNary. I like the idea of Meals on Wheels if it's available. You do? Okay. A um, more conference center would be fine too. Mm -hmm. Trustee Otmar. I'm fine with either. I'm, I don't necessarily have a preference. Okay. Trustee Bri Brian Swanson. I've got no preference. Yeah. Mandy, what would you like to contribute? Have you ever added a tree at Spanish Okay, so Mandy was saying that they do their admin retreat at Spanish Bay every year, so it could be an option. And the room is free, but there is a, a banquet charge. Um, okay, so do we need to kind of figure out the location tonight or just no, kind of have that in our minds? No, just, yes, just to have it. In, I'll make a note to uh, reach out to the Meals on Wheels folks and ask Great. them. Um, okay, and back to you all. One of the things that sometimes boards uh, do is they conduct what's called an, a validation visit. And that basically means you're going to visit the site of or the district in which the candidate comes from. Uh, it, I will tell you, we do put it down as part of the process. It's becoming less and less of something that districts have decided to do. That validation visit typically involves board members going down to the person uh, district and meeting with their board. Sometimes the district, meaning Pacific Grove, would bring a contingency of maybe association members or parents and so on, and they would go down with the, the board and meet with uh, job alikes or a group alike. So parents would meet with parents, your association can meet with associations along the way. It's something just to think about. You don't have to make any decisions tonight. As I said, we're probably now less than what? 10%? Very few. Or, COVID changed that yeah. process a great deal. Yeah. People started using different mm -hmm. means to do that. Mm -hmm. And it also depends on where your candidate is coming from. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's, a, if it's a national person, uh, although depending on where it is, you may have an inkling to want to yeah. go visit <laughs> <laughs> them along the way. But uh, we that decision does not have to be made tonight. Just want to put it as, as a possibility. Thank you. Can I make one last quick message on the scheduling? Sure. If it, is it possible to do that as an after work if we have less candidates and then expand it downwards if not? Or do folks prefer it being nine to five normally for that day, the Columbus Day uh, superintendent interview? Well, is it, ask your question again. Just wondering, like if, if we, I, I will block off the whole day, but I'm just wondering if we can prioritize doing it as an evening. You're trying meeting. to wiggle it into a smaller day. Trying to get it into less of a day if it could be. If it and could be, I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to limit any business that needs to be conducted. But I'm trying just to. Can we move it to Tuesday instead? I don't. I mean, if everybody's okay with changing the day, I don't want to. I know. I, I want to make sure that everybody feels good about the day, and there's not additional stress added. 
I'm sure changing the day might be stressful now too, but. Um, I mean, for me, it doesn't, you know, one day is there doesn't matter. It's like the work piles up on one day or it piles up on the other yeah. and it's already piled up. So, yeah. um, you know, it doesn't really, you know, so long as it, and I've checked all of these options anyway, so long as it doesn't interfere with a time that I'm out of town, um, I'm fine with that. So, I mean, can I propose we'd like, we pencil in the ninth, 10th, and then we can refine as we know more or is that a bad practice to have no actually we do, that. we do that we do that frequently yeah. that it. you're far enough that. away where we can right yeah that gives us monday and tuesday that way and then we can kind of decide based on i would just need six weeks of advance notice okay before um because okay. that's when my schedule comes out six weeks in advance so are you okay block tentatively blocking the ninth and tenth then laura for that is that six weeks out enough I would just have to ask for the specific day, right. whichever specific day, because I'm not, I can't take two days. Ah, right? understood. Work. Okay. Thank yeah. you for that. So, you know, if we know six weeks in advance, that'd be great. Otherwise I just prefer to make it the 10th if everybody's on board with that and just be done with it. Okay. So we need to know by the end of August, if we're going to do a six weeks out for October. Is everybody... Would you be okay with Tuesday? Mm -hmm. And you're okay with Tuesday? Jen, are you okay with Tuesday? I Can we just make it Tuesday? And then there's not confusion. And, and yeah, just... I would just say the same thing. If we could back it back downwards from the evening to the full day would be great. But yes, I Tuesday, I can. So what I'm hearing for clarification is that we're <laughs> going to do it on October 10th. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. In terms of the time frame, give me some, give us direction. I would say nine to block it from nine to five because uh -huh. we might need nine to five. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's plan for that. And if we need less time, we can determine that as it gets closer. And potentially evening as it gets closer. Let's just plan for nine to five. So people who have to take off work can. can. Right. I'm just saying it. I would love to if I don't have to take off work so I don't get behind. If if it shrinks, I guess I'm just, you said, I mean, it, anyway. It you want to block nine to nine? I would prefer that and then shrink it down. I like that idea. Nine to nine. nine, to nine and then, yes. yeah, if nine. they're, ex, you know, depending upon what it is, we roll earlier into the day, right? It's exactly. And if we don't need the evening, we don't use it. But it, it's mm -hmm. really hard to make a decision on a calendar this far out mm -hmm. without consulting my family. So I do appreciate a little bit of um, understanding of that. Okay. Board is okay with night blocking nine to nine? Mm -hmm. so nine a.m. to nine p.m.? Mm -hmm. On October 10. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Sorry to bring it back up and make that painful, but thank you all. I think that was me, Elliot. No, no, you helped. <laughs> you helped. I'm putting my calendar on in real time because uh, I understand in terms of when you're trying to match other people's calendars like my wife's <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah thank you for that okay great one of the next thing we have is we have to decide uh contract parameters and basically what the board will do is give us some direction in terms of what is the intent in terms of the salary that you're going to pay the new superintendent there are several factors that play in this, including their experience. You know, uh, oftentimes we take a look at the current superintendent's uh, contract, and not necessarily for the salary, although that does help, to, what may help the board, but also for things such as vacation, health benefits, and some of those other things. Each candidate we bring to you for interviewing, we're going to give them a contract parameter sheet. And we want to make sure when we're talking about matches that they are within the range of where the board says they want to be. So uh, one of the things that would be helpful if we can get the current uh, superintendent's contract and we can work with Mandy with your direction to, to do that. Sure. As I said, that gives us the types of things that you're currently paying. Your doesn't mean you're, you need to stick to that, mm -hmm. but it starts as a template for us to work with. 
And, and if, if you have anything that you would like to have modified within that or revised, now would be a good time to perhaps even do a subcommittee to do that so that when we get to the interviews on October, you know as a board what your parameters are that you're interested in. So if it means talking with legal counsel, if there's been you know, something that's changed. We also need to put a salary range. That's by law now. Yeah. This past September, it, it you may have heard, is passed. Yeah. And so we need to put what the range is for the position. Actually, we posted on the position description so that that's known. And it can be a wide, wide. range. Yeah. Wide. It doesn't have to tie you down. It, it just um, gives an indication of what the level of the sal um, salary will be for the position. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, and the subcommittee would they work with you? Um, if there, were, if we developed a subcommittee, would would they be working with with you all to kind of hash out those details? Typically, you're going to work with your attorney. Yes. Okay. Your attorney. Yes, because we we don't actually get involved in the contract negotiations aspect of things, but we do want to have an idea of of the range itself. And so you don't have to settle on that tonight per se, but we would like to have it fairly soon as we're going to start our recruiting and so on once we. Get through the process. Okay. So I guess the first question to the board is, would you like to develop a subcommittee to review in detail the contract, the superintendent contract? So I'll go around and ask uh, Dr. Hazen. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I am in support of that if we feel it's necessary. Sure. Okay. Clerk McNary. I think there's value in that, especially given we've been, um, we've had the same superintendent. So for so long, it'd be nice to review it in depth, mm -hmm. um, see what makes sense moving forward. Trustee Altmar. I agree with that. I think reviewing the contract is a great idea. Um, as far as a subcommittee goes, it's difficult because there's just two of us. I would like to look at it. I don't necessarily know that I have time to be on a subcommittee, but I would like to be able to review it and provide input. So I'm wondering if it's possible for each member, for each trustee to be able to review it and provide input to the subcommittee. Is that That's something a, that we can do? Yes. So the subcommittee, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, um, there would be two who would be so selected by our, you know, ourselves and they would review it and then they would bring that to the board um, through the normal board agenda and a regular meeting and then their discussion would take place. Is that correct? Okay. Is it possible for us to each individually review the contract though and provide, I don't know how we would do that, provide a feedback. I just feel like having only two it's just, it's difficult when we've had a, it's the same contract in place for 16 years, having um, just four eyes on it is, uh, and then bringing that to the board, it feels like it might take a lot of time. I see. So I don't, I just don't know what the semantics are there. If, if it's possible to do it individually and then submit maybe to Lou, I don't know if that's. Well, um, submit it through legal individually. Mm -hmm. So maybe that makes sense. maybe not do a committee, maybe just have Lou send us the current contract and each of us individually send back um, re revisions or edits. I do think there's value in having a committee as well, because even once, per, so perhaps that was like the first step, right. but the committee would then gather those mm -hmm. and and kind of delve into it. The current contract is public information, mm -hmm. so you should yes. have that available we do. Um, to you. And so in terms of review, but using your legal counsel would be very wise. To anything that we might want to modify yes. or adjust. Mm -hmm. yes. And then maybe whatever we bring to Lou, then we can have, yeah, the subcommittee can take it from there to mm -hmm. consolidate or... Yeah, go ahead, Elliot. I might just, I, again, if folks like this idea, I might even suggest we ask Lou for his suggested modifications alongside the existing contract. So we could have like an A and then it be to compare it to, um, to give those comments back. But I'm also okay if we want, I, I like your idea a lot of having individual input before or maybe in place of a subcommittee. Uh, Trustee Brian Swanson. Um, I'm not really in favor of a subcommittee. I, I, I think we should all be looking at it at whatever level we can and just keep the information flowing. I know it's more work, but this is a contract that it's at its base is 16 years old. And uh, I love the idea of we should bring Lou into it. Of course, he's seen contracts from all over the place, um, uh, but they can be so nuanced 
that, you know, as we go from step one to step two to step three, there might be things that come up. Um, I'd rather we all be looking at it and uh, figuring out a way that we exchange. And it may be, again, another quick meeting for, a, you know, I know it would have to be public, but with Lou uh, for an hour to sit down and look at that stuff so that we're all involved from the beginning to the end. Um, I know it's extra work, but um, I just, I, I think that that's the path that we should all be there from the beginning to the end with the contract. Okay, that <clears throat> brings up a good point, Brian. So essentially, if we don't, the reason for a subcommittee is to kind of, is to hash out the details with the two who are on the subcommittee and then bring it forward at a board meeting. If we don't do the subcommittee, we do need to do a public meeting where all five of us are here. We're going line by line. We've read it prior. We've got a packet. We're bringing our ideas together. And if that sounds the best to all of you, then that's what we should do. And we can have Mandy, we can direct Mandy to um, work with Lou to set, set up that meeting. And uh, Eric and Sally, remind me of the timing that you would need us to do that. We'd like to have it somewhere near the beginning of July. Okay. We want to make sure you have that detail done mm -hmm. by the time you have the candidate before you. Because you, it, there's really usually after you want to make an offer, that contract comes fairly soon after that. And you don't want to just be starting on it then. We need the range, though, more by that July time range. What range, which isn't the contract language. It's just a broad number. Go ahead, Elliot. Oh. Mm -hmm. You'll have to come up to the podium for the public meeting. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you can take the mic back with you. Cause... No, thank you. Okay. Um, I We have it reviewed regularly by legal counsel when it comes to the board. So I just was wondering if it would be helpful for us to send the current contract to Lou and ask him to just redline it first on his end and then bring that to you guys. I'm, I guess, or my, if you want to start with you, because I don't know if you know what you're trying, what items you're redlining. So Does I that makes sense. Are we looking at terms and provisions that we want to be included or benefits? Like, for example, if he has a, a cell phone or a housing allowance, right. those types of things. Yeah. So those yeah. don't necessarily, those are kind of up to us. It's not going to be legal's advice to say like, don't give him XYZ mileage allowance or, or maybe it will be like, this is out of line with what all the other districts are doing. But given that Lou's been reviewing the contract every year, I'd like to rely on legal counsel that our contract is fair and reasonable and in the best interest of the district. Um, because it's been approved by the board after legal review for the past however many years. I like the idea of a subcommittee. I think that allows everybody to provide input. And then it provides kind of like a I don't know what the right word is, a conduit for it all to be like crunched down, kind of the same way we're doing a subcommittee on policy. Everybody reads the policy. And if anybody has input into it, they're welcome to put it. But then we have someone who or some two people who are going to be point people in terms of what gets left in and what gets left out. Still, we will all discuss it as a board before any decisions are made. So I guess in terms of making sure everyone has the information and has opportunity for input, that would still be available. I just think it's going to get messy and more cumbersome if we're doing this and everybody go read the contract and everybody come back with your ideas. It's going to, I foresee it being a challenge for us to all land when we're coming at it from everybody's different perspectives in a public meeting. I don't know how fast that would be to hash out in open session or in closed session. Mike and I mean, my concern is look at the challenge we had just setting the meetings. <laughs> I mean, there's resistance, you know, for valid reasons, but there's mm -hmm. there's a challenge and even setting up that meeting. So so us saying we don't want to utilize the committee, the tool of having a subcommittee and we want to bring this back for an entire public meeting mm -hmm. versus an item in a regular board meeting. I don't know. I don't know. I'm curious how that's going to play out since it was a challenge to even get um, an extra meeting to interview and things like that. So, so are you, so are you all okay? I guess I'm hearing two different things, right? I'm hearing kind of like resistance to, to, to additional meetings, but I'm also hearing we want to add meetings. So I think we should get on the same page. Something else to consider is if we're all providing input to legal, 
that adds up in terms of cost. If we're and it's if, not productive discussion, right? Because then Lou's like, well, now I have two five versions of okay. contracts versus know. you know everyone reviews and then we have our smaller subcommittee kind of do the final review. Nothing will be decided without the entire board. Is that something that we? I'm sorry, Elliot. Okay. Is it something that we can bring into you know a half an hour closed session or an hour closed session where we discuss? we discuss it, we come to sort of what we are all comfortable with, and then we bring that into an agendized item in a meeting. It won't be half an hour. Mm -hmm. It'll be long. It'll be longer. It'll be long. <laughs> I mean, even just talking about it, we've spent 20 <laughs> minutes just now on right. this. So it'll be 90 minutes of discussion minimum, I think, if we're wanting to do it in a pub, all, you know, in, in a public meeting. Mm -hmm. In a normal year, we already already would have reviewed that contract. You know, we haven't this year. I have in years past. You have in years past. You know, it's not overly complicated. Um, but again, we have three folks on here who on the board here who haven't gone through that process before. Um, Can I make a suggestion? And maybe this would be having someone else be the amalgamator other than Lou, if there's someone else. And I don't want to offer anyone up, but they could do that amalgamation. But I like the idea of us all saying these are items that we're concerned about, or these are items that we're not concerned about, or these are things that aren't in there, putting that together in a way that, because there might be 90% of the contract that none of us have an issue with. And then we don't need to go line by line through the whole thing. So I think there is like a, a middle ground where we can do um, group think in a public session without taking the whole contract line by line. Personally. We do have the board does have a legal contract with William Tunic, mm -hmm. and it's not specific for the special meeting. It can be for anything, and maybe in the light of fresh eyes on everything, this is a contract that perhaps could benefit from fresh eyes. So we could have William Tunic facilitate a meeting specific to Zhujing, for lack of a better word. The the contract we've got public comment, I believe, waiting. And if there's any public comment online, please raise your hand, and we will get to you. Please go ahead. Um, <clears throat> we had a subcommittee that, that, uh, formulated the contract for a superintendent. Um, I'm not going to tell you how we did that. Just me and another board member at my kitchen table, we wrote his contract. Um, I'm sure we got legal to okay it at some point, but what I was thinking was, I mean, cause the subcommittee does do, um, the grunt work, it really doesn't take any, uh, in my opinion, it doesn't take any um, opinions away from anyone else. Um, but you also have your superintendent evaluation and you might wanna be looking at that because that's the piece that can kind of direct how you might wanna change a contract based on how you evaluated your last superintendent and then the other thing was too that that contract is is pretty should be a little bit loose because whoever you hire is going to have some wants and so like the cell phone and all of these other things they're going to have they're going to want to negotiate a little bit and you want to so you want to have some wiggle room for that because that's only reasonable and so you'll you'll end up kind of negotiating with the one you hire on how how to put together that contract. Thank you. I don't see any hands up online, um, but I'm sure Lewis will keep an eye out if there are any. Um, let's go around again and and um, kind of shore this up if we can. So, Clerk McNary, I'm in favor of a subcommittee. Okay, Trustee Otmar. I am in favor of individually reviewing the contract and um, having a subcommittee, getting that to the subcommittee so the subcommittee can sort of consolidate. Trustee Brian Swanson? Uh, my position remains the same. I'm not in favor of a subcommittee. Okay, I'm in favor of a subcommittee. Uh, Trustee Hazen? I'm probably right between Trustee Otmar and Trustee Swanson, I like the idea of us all in reviewing, but I would be okay with having a subcommittee, you know, take the individual concerns and amalgamating. Okay, uh, so the majority of the board is in favor of having a subcommittee. I don't love that we're not all in favor of it. I think it's important that 
we try to get all in favor as much as we can during this process. So, um, Brian, do you have concerns that you want to discuss that could help this or? Uh, no, nothing further, nothing than what I said before. You know, I think it's just, it's a complicated process. I'd like for us to be all involved in it as much as possible from the beginning to the end. And I know it can be clunky. I do think it's important to note that when we're talking about calendars, we're talking about people's personal lives. And that's why it gets, you know, or somebody's work schedule and things like that. And that can be really complicated trying to figure out how we're going to do that versus people being able to review it on their own schedule and contribute at whatever level they're able to contribute. Which is what a subcommittee would do is allow people on their own time to contribute and also allow everyone to have a voice. Yeah, I just think without a subcommittee, it allows for some more back and forth to work through some of the nuances of it. So, in a public meeting, you mean? Yep. Okay. I mean, it would have to be a public meeting. I'm just wondering when we would do the hashing out if we're not going to have the subcommittee kind of, um, I guess, narrow down. Maybe we all find the same three points and then it limits it by the time we're done. Having a subcommittee would then have us have more direction by the time we got to a public meeting rather than all five of us show up with our things. No, I agree. I guess my thought though is, you know, let's imagine that the contract was sent out. We all had the exact same red lines. Maybe there's not a need for a subcommittee in that situation. We would just then take the contract as we group edit it or not group edit it, but we we can't group edit that. anything though is the challenge. As I was met, sorry, I misspoke. What I was trying to say is as we send our comments to together, if there's red lines, I'll agree. There may not be a need for a subcommittee. And so I'm am in favor of it if it's something that would be useful to do. But I do get Trustee Swanson's point too, that I think there is the possibility for a subcommittee to have certain voices be lost if they're not on the subcommittee. And I do think with something as important as a contract, we just need to make sure. So if there's a way to ensure that process that voices are not lost, um, you know, by having a subcommittee, I again, I could be, I, I would be in favor of that as well. I just, I don't know if a priori is needed. So I'm hearing that there's a distrust in the process of a subcommittee for this item. Um, that's... Those aren't the words necessarily I use. I think it's just, it's human nature that if you have a subcommittee, those folks will have more of a say in a matter potentially. So I mean, not distrust. It's a, it's a. You don't, you don't trust it that all the voices will be heard the same if there's a subcommittee. I think by def definition, a subcommittee would have more, more way in on a on a topic than would all five individual board members. I think that's the point of a subcommittee is to hash out those differences and come up with an agreement, right? So it's not a distrust. I'm not saying that people are going to be like going behind each other's backs, but I think it's just a potential for some voices potentially to be heard less unintentionally even by that. So you're point. not feeling that the subcommittee is the proper tool for this review of the contract? I'm saying it may, it may not be if it, given, depending how the individual reads go is my thought. But um, again, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to consider it. <laughs> I'm not saying that I'm wholly against it, but I, I do agree with Okay. Trustee Swanson's point that it. Okay. Um, I'm hearing that the entirety of the board is not in favor of a subcommittee for this item. I think that's accurate. Is that accurate? Yes. Yeah. You don't have unanimity. Unanimity. We all know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so um, if we don't have, even though technically we go with the majority of the board, and actually I don't know what to do right now. We have the majority of the board who's fine with the subcommittee, so maybe that's what we should do, but also we have two who are feeling like it's not the right tool for this process, and I would really like for all of us to be in, comfortable and supportive of this process and also it's 706. So we need to can, can I just clarify again? Because I feel like my words are not quite I, I am in I am in support of a subcommittee if it is the right tool after people have given their individual edits, I guess is one of my thought. Not group editing, but that's just, not really how it works, unfortunately. We we would develop the subcommittee and then we would that's correct. I mean, that's how a subcommittee goes is you develop a subcommittee and then you you begin the the detailed work of it because it 
takes that detailed work and it allows it to happen outside of a regular board meeting, then the culmination of all of the detailed work comes to the regular board meeting and then and then we discuss it as a whole and then we move forward. So um, there isn't really an opportunity to see if a subcommittee is needed or not. We just make one. I appreciate the clarification. Can I, perhaps what we should do is if the, if the board is all right with this is maybe we take the time between today and the next meeting and we can all review the contract and we can, I don't know how, maybe we can add it to the agenda. I can email it. Mm -hmm. Um, or add it online, and then uh, we can discuss it as an agendized item at the, our next meeting, and we can make a decision then, because realistically, if there's not a lot of changes, we're just talking in a circle, and it may not be something that's necessary. If I read through it personally, and I think, oh, there's a lot of stuff in here that I just can't get on board with, then we may want to include legal, because not just specifically for me, but if I have a lot of questions, that might be something that I would be more in favor of. Whereas it just seems like a, a general contract that feels fine. Maybe we just go with that. You know, if we each have the same feeling about it, I don't know how the rest of the board feels about that, but. I, I like that idea. So we all get a copy of the present contract that we have and we agendize an item for the next meeting that's specifically addressing whether or not we form a subcommittee to review and edit and present a new contract uh, as we proceed with the search. So we're not actually talking about items on the contract, but how do we feel about this kind of what, what would be a starting point, at least, for the contract moving forward? I'm okay with that. And which attorney would we like to have a fresh set of eyes on the contract or would we like to bring it to the same attorney that's been reviewing it year after year? Are we there yet? I think we're just right now just looking at, we're just right now talking about whether or not we form a subcommittee and that's based upon our read through of the contract that we presently have. And just to get, it's like, because I do, I do think if we all, once we all take a look at it, um, It'll be like, oh, all right, so this is either this is really complicated or this is not. And, you know, there's a bunch of stuff maybe I want to get rid of or maybe not. And uh, and I haven't looked at it in a year. So I think during so you're saying that the agenda item would be to decide if we have a subcommittee or not. Mm -hmm. And that reviewing the contract before the next meeting will inform that decision for the five of us. How? By getting our eyes on the actual contract, like Laura was talking about, it's like you've not actually reviewed it. So it's like in looking at it, be like, oh, this is really heavy and I really want to be involved in this or this is not this is not a lot. I, am I interpreting what you were saying correctly? Yeah, absolutely. I, I feel right now I've not seen the contract. So I'm speaking very blindly. I, I don't know if I'm going to look at that and think, Woo, that's not quite right. Or if I'm just going to look at it and think, hey, you know what? I'm okay with this. And and if I would be more in favor of having a subcommittee of two make decisions about a contract that I had few concerns about, than having a committee of two make decisions about a contract that I had many concerns about. The subcommittee just the subcommittee does not make decisions. The subcommittee would just have the time to read over the document, work together as two, and make recommendations to the entire board with legal counsel. So there wouldn't be any decisions made by the subcommittee. The subcommittee, it's just because you've, you know, you've experienced board meetings and at board meetings, we don't have the time to actually read over a document unless we're having a special meeting for it. And so just like the policy committee, reviews the policies it would it would be just like that so just so you know that there's no decisions being made by a subcommittee subcommittee's purpose is just to read it and make recommendations say hey we noticed this hey we we took the time to look up um contracts in four other comparable um districts and this one did this and that one did this and so that type of thing like actually like put some research into it and work with legal counsel so I suppose my my only concern there would be if there was an area that I had concern with that didn't wasn't um, 
necessarily seen as an issue for the subcommittee. Mm -hmm. So then something, an issue that I may have had with a contract wouldn't be addressed. That would be where my concern with, would lie. And by no means am I saying that the subcommittee would be doing a subpar job. I'm just saying that what I might consider important might not be important to one and you wouldn't people. feel like that would be able to be discussed at the moment when the subcommittee brought that up on the agenda at the meeting. If you that's would feel like it was maybe the train was already out of the station. If it's open to that, then I'm okay with it. I'm okay with a subcommittee. I just want to make sure that there is nothing happening in in that committee that is, um, I guess, one a decision which you're saying won't wouldn't happen, but also that input would. I could give input mm -hmm. um, and that input would be received and then something could be modified based on that, based on however the other trustees felt. Okay. I just feel like like equal representation across the entire board and I want to make sure that nobody's left out by any means um, because everybody has sort of different ideas of what a priority is in the contract maybe okay. or what feels right and what doesn't. I okay. hope that makes sense. So it sounds like we are going to put this on um, the next agenda uh, for the June 1st meeting to consider a subcommittee for the superintendent contract. Mandy, I see you making a note of that for the next agenda for a June 1st meeting and included in the packet would be the superintendent contract, please. Yeah. You could, yeah, if we don't, I already have it, but have yeah, it. sure, might as well. Um, yeah, but it um, that would be in the in the packet for that item. I will discuss the subcommittee at that time. Okay, how's everyone doing? Do we need a five minute break or shall we continue on? I'd prefer we keep plowing forward. Okay, let's continue on. Alrighty, are there any other questions regarding the process itself? And our next step is going to be asking you for the characteristics that you want to see in your next superintendent, the, the strengths of the district and the um, challenges or areas of growth for the district. But I want to make sure, first of all, that you understand the process, that you're comfortable with where we're going, what we've been doing, et cetera. Board, anyone have any questions or comments related to the process so far? You guys have been great. Thanks. Thanks so much. And any members of the public have any questions, comments, I should say? Okay, I don't see anyone. We have eight folks online right now, including myself and Brian. So, <laughs> <laughs> and the boardroom. So, bye. Okay, um, please. Okay, so I'm going to just literally throw out the prompt. The first prompt is going to be uh, what are the characteristics you, or, that are desired in the next superintendent? As I said, we're going to go through those three prompts. If we're on prompt two, uh, the district strengths, and you think, oh, I just thought of another characteristic, just say, I thought of another characteristic. So it's, it's not as linear as it may sound. So you get a chance to go back and forth. Also keeping in mind that sometimes a strength is also an area of, of concern, thoughts, growth, et cetera, along the way. But that being said, put your thinking hats on. And here's your opportunity as a board to uh, respond to the three prompts. Also, I want to reemphasize re that these are the same three prompts that every focus group would get. And so there will be an opportunity for us to be able to see trends ac accordingly. And there's uh, basically there's the three of the questions are also embedded in the online survey. So that also will help us triangulate. Okay. That being said, I will turn it over to you. Okay, Heather. great. Uh, Trustee Dr. Hazen. And Will you reiterate the first question? Yeah. What are the desired characteristics you want to see in, in your next superintendent? Yeah. And, and we're forward thinking. Yes. So I, I had three written down and I do reserve the right to come up with more as um, off riffing off of others' ideas. But um, one is, you know, a longevity and commitment to the district. I mean, part of what makes I know this is getting into question two, but what makes Pacific Grove special is the number of folks that want to either grow up here and come back or, you know, stay here. So having that commitment is important to me. I think a clear and developed leadership style. So this is making sure that, you know, it's, they're not going to come in and just sit back on the rest on their laurels, but they have an idea of how they view leadership working um, and one that matches with the community. <laughs> Um, opinion as well, ideally. And then the third is this idea of being somewhat visionary, yet with consensus building. And I understand that might seem like a contradiction. But what I mean is, you know, I, I do want this, the superintendent to be willing to come to us with, with 
you know, I would even say radical ideas, um, but also not implementing those radical ideas without making sure it's the will of the district, if that makes sense. Clerk McNary. Um, I would like to see someone who has experience with DEI work. Um, I think a hands-on management approach is valuable for me. And I think shared with what Dr. Hazen said, I want someone who has experience, but is also committed to longevity in the district. So as to say someone who's not kind of looking to be here and retire, and also not someone who's looking to use our small district as a jumping off point, someone who wants to stay um, in within the district for for some period. Um, personally, I would love someone with fresh energy um, and someone who is going to bring in, like you said, fresh new ideas um, looking forward. Um, yeah, that's. And someone who's going to bring the community and the district together. Trustee Altmar. Oh, my mic's on. Um, one of the things that is high on my list for a characteristic for our superintendent is somebody that is focused on the social emotional health and wellness, not only of the students, but of the staff as well. Somebody that can support staff, somebody that staff feels like um, is, I don't want to say on the same level, but somebody that they can um, be inspired by and know that the superintendent has their back. And um, and a superintendent that can really sort of take a step back and look at the district as a whole and say, is this district emotionally healthy? What can I do to propel this district forward so that everyone is feeling supported? That also comes with what you were talking about. Um, so for me, that's up there. Somebody that supports the idea of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, someone that's accountable and is okay with being accountable when things go wrong. They're able to say, you know what, um, either I could have done better or this is how I will do better or somebody that's that's comfortable with being honest and also approachable. Um, I agree with the longevity piece. I, I don't want somebody here that's um, using us as a stepping stone. Um, and I also don't want somebody sort of at the end of their career. Um, that's what I have so far. I'll probably add more though. Yeah. Trustee Brian Swanson. All of those things that everybody has said <laughs> so far. Yeah. Um, and the list could be long. Um, somebody, and these are a little bit more on the technical side or at least a couple, right? It's like somebody with um, ed code knowledge. I think about the meetings that we'd had in the past where where with Ralph, it's like you'd mention something and he'd be like, oh, it's it's this and this and this and this is that. And he, you know, he was a uh, really great about that. Somebody who's bilingual. I mean, I think that that's something that's really important in our district. Um, somebody with past superintendent experience and classroom experience. You know, it's like that. I think it's really important for our teachers to feel like, to know that our superintendent has been in the trenches and what that has been like too. Um, you know, a demonstrated ability to commute, uh, to communicate with all of the stakeholders too, the parents and the staff and, you know, the community at large too, and to figure out how do we, in, you know, it's, that's a trick being able to, to do that. Not a trick, it's a skill. And uh, but that's so vital. I would love to find somebody who's coming from a district that has a really well oiled and robust ability to communicate um, in the world that we live in right now, too, because, you know, it's so 
I don't know what we do about Twitter and TikTok and Facebook and Instagram and all that stuff, but it's there right now. And how do we do that? How do we manage it? You know, and it would be great to find somebody who's been through that, uh, who has some ideas about how do we manage that? Um, you know, so those are off the, you know, kind of my short list at least. Thank you. And I was checking off um, the rep repetitious ones on my list. So I'm not going over. So um, something that's important to me is someone who can be a measurable goal setter. Data is really important and, um, you know, basic. I'm not talking about, you know, a scientific study on everything, but like just basic data just as a baseline is really important to me. Um, going forward, um, someone who can demonstrate that they know how to grow and evaluate the staff that they oversee. I'm really, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and then um, someone who's okay saying no to the board, like really being respectfully honest to us, letting us know, I mean, they can explain why, but um, having real conversations um, that puts me at ease and makes me feel uh, that I can trust the, the leadership, trust the guidance and that, it, that we know where we stand. Um, and then uh, lastly, which has kind of been brought up is um, someone who values communication and input from the community embraces that. And that's my list. Do we have anyone from the, the public who would like to input right now, acknowledging that the public will have um, many opportunities for that moving forward, but here we are tonight. So if anyone has anything, you're more than welcome to contribute. I don't see anyone online raising their hand. Anyone here in person? <laughs> <laughs> I do. Did it's a sincere ask. Something best? Since you asked. <laughs> um, <clears throat> one of the things, well, this is really kind of going to their next question about what do you see the district needs? Um, but I would just say that I'm not worried about someone who has necessarily been a superintendent because Ralph was not a superintendent. He was a, an assistant superintendent. So when you're kind of when you're looking for the the drive or the new ideas of someone, you know, that's going to be maybe in somebody that hasn't had the chance to be a superintendent. We are a small district. It's a perfect little place to start, you know. So I, I don't know. I wouldn't feel wor worried about how long they're going to be here. We thought Ralph was going to be here five years. That's what we gave him. I mean, he kind of gave us that information, you know, like I'm interested in the state. I just have to let you know, I like working with the state, the AXA group. And, you know, so we kind of took that as like, huh, okay, well, that's okay. Let's go with this, you know? So, and it worked out. Um, so you just don't know, you know, and there could be a, re uh, there could be somebody that's going to retire that is like a, you know, has a wealth of information, too. So I wouldn't necessarily count that person out either. Um, <clears throat> but I'm looking for someone who uh, is, you know, very easy to communicate with. I think that's really that with the public, and as well as with all staff and the board members, and um, someone who really does have a, a vision of a, you know, world class education for our students and and that is sometimes thinking out of the box you know I like that I think that's what you need in the small district too because we have limitations so um, that would be mine thank you so much Mr. Moss back to you okay again if you think of something else under the characteristics please feel free to let us know and we'll as well. Now we're going to move to this opportunity for you to brag about Pacific Grove. Mm -hmm. What are the strengths of this district? Why should someone decide, hey, Pacific Grove is the place where I want to be? So it's your chance to brag. 
Clerk McNary. I think we boast a very strong academic programming for the majority of our students. Um, we have a strong community network. Um, we're a great district. Um, that's not really quantifiable. Um, we, we have exceptional staff who are dedicated to the families they serve. We have um, amazing community members and um, parents and guardians who um, I think are willing and able to get involved in the district if we solicited input properly. Um, we were a small district and I think that allows us the opportunity to kind of pivot. I think the, wor the word um, President Carolyn used is nimble. And I think being small is a strength because if we try something out and it doesn't work, it may only impact, we may be able to pivot into a new program, whereas a school district with 10,000 kids, it's a lot harder to transition. Um, and I, th I really think our size is a strength. Um, I think that's where I'll start for, for now. Trustee Otmar? Well, you nailed a lot of my stuff. <laughs> so um, I just, I, I definitely want to reiterate um, our staff. We, the staff here is fantastic. They're dedicated, they're engaged. Um, and it's so important that that continues. So having a superintendent that encourages that and supports that um, and recognizes that. Um, all of the things that you said, that's, yeah, <laughs> go PGUSD, <laughs> right on. Trustee Brian Swanson. Um, all of those things again, and um, it is amazing how supportive the, everybody is of each other, you know, and uh, um, I'm trying to think of a better example that doesn't include me, but I'll get that quick, that quick one. Anyway, it's like during during the rains, I'd heard that like Buck's house was flooding, right? And it's like I texted him right away. It's like, do you, what do you need, right? It's like I've got sump pumps, I got shop vacs. It's like I can leave, and that's what how this community works, you know. And you hear somebody's having trouble, it's like, well, can I do that? Or it's like, you know, calling up forget who it was as somebody on staff it's like when I had the marathon stuff going on and I needed a couple more bodies and it's like can, you know it's like can you come and do this yeah and they're there it's like it's really remarkable that we have that um we have a great music program you know the participation in music and theater is really really astounding and the level that they perform at too is incredible um uh and we pass bond measures here too we actually get those done which i think says a lot about the way the community feels about our schools and that to me it's like and i and i know that doesn't happen in other other communities but it happens here and i that says a lot too again about just how the community supports uh the district and how they value uh education and they value the students and making sure that they get a good education so those are a few of them <clears throat> thank you brian um so a couple of things i think that make us a little bit unique besides just our geography is um we have a pretty robust special ed program um our district has a culture of valuing our students who qualify for special education uh, I think we have about 14% um, kids who qualify for IEPs um, in the district, uh, my student being one of them. So I have kind of that personal um, perspective as well as uh, being a board member. Um, we do have a retiring special ed director, but she truly did uh, take the time to learn everything about the students, which speaks to kind of one of the strengths of being a small district. Like they're not a lot of school districts who have a special ed director who, if she sees any 
child who qualifies for special ed, she won't, wouldn't share their details, right? Because she's professional, but, but she knows, she knows um, the details of the kids. So um, we have low staff turnover. Um, Billy Mankey, our director of HR could give you the data on that. I don't remember it, but I know that it's a fact. Mm. Um, and staff, I mean, at the sites, and typically actually at the district office as well, but we're in kind of a season where um, we've got a little bit of a cycle going where um, staff is retiring right now. Um, we live, the, the district itself is a walkable area, um, which is actually very enjoyable. You can, I actually, when I first got on the board, one of the trustees walked me to every single school site. We spent like four hours doing it because we were looking at the school sites, but um, it's a walkable, beautiful area that the climate is pretty much one season all year. So it's never too hot and never too cold. Um, but back to the schools. So um, <laughs> um, the families are really dedicated in this district. And I'm not saying other districts, they aren't, but we do have really dedicated families in this district. So we have robust PTAs, um, presidents of PTAs that have been president, like they're, they're presidents of PTAs or some form in the executive leadership of a PTA all through elementary school and middle and high. Um, we technically have six sites in our district. We have two elementary schools, a middle school and a high school, a comprehensive high school and an alternative high school. And then we have our adult school. Um, and um, so it's, I, I think it's an exciting district because we're, we're, smaller, but we're not so tiny, you know, that, um, that we can't try out new things or embrace new things. Um, we actually have some diversity in our, in our schools because we have the Naval Postgraduate School and the Defense Language Institute that brings actually military officers in. Um, and a lot of times, um, one of, another one of our strengths is that we have a, um, what's the word? Um, people think of our district highly. So we have that um, reputation, thank you. So our district's reputation, real estate agents love us because they're like, ooh, <laughs> house for sale on PG. Have you heard about the schools? You know, so that's like a whole thing. Um, so, and you will see that our home prices are higher for better, for worse. Um, <laughs> and it's because of the perception of the reputation right. of our schools, I think. Um, our board itself, um, we don't always get along, but our meetings are respectful. Um, you can see us deliberate maybe for too long on certain items like you saw us tonight, but it's all with the idea of respecting each other and trying to hear each other. Um, we don't have a board that's, um, I don't, I mean, maybe our meetings aren't like as efficient or as they could be, but um, if that's like the only downside of our board, we're doing pretty damn good, you know? So, um, that's what I have on my list. Can, can I add to one thing that you said, Carolyn, too, about longevity? Because I did a quick run on the math again from last week. This, I think, is a good example. So we had a retiree and rec uh, recognition uh, part of our board meeting. We had 10 people that we recognized for a total of 152 years. That to me is astounding when that at that your average 15.2 years out of that group i think that that's unusual and it speaks and that was from across the board right it was really really insane um but i'm proud that we have that oh go ahead go ahead um yeah just to say that you know everybody has said it's i mean this highlights the functionality of the board and that i think we are all agreeing on most of these items which is amazing um it is a strong community but there's also a desire to make the community better I mean, that's one thing like there have been things in the community and you know it's part of the district we're broader like you know dealing with past injustices i'll say that you know the community is willing to move forward maybe not as fast as some folks would like but that is a strength um a care for the district in the sense of we like people are proud to be Pogrovians. There's a nickname of Pogrovian that, that goes along with that, for example. We are, I mean, this comes on your point about uh, President Carolyn about the home values, but we're well funded thanks to our property taxes, mm -hmm. but we could be better funded. That's not to say we're, you know, rolling in the dough, but it's, but being well funded is a pretty 
it's, it's a nice thing for a board to have. I'll say um, we value our staff as members of the community following on your point um, again, President Carolyn, that the staff are extremely dedicated to the district. I can't tell you the number of times I've been out in the community at an event and seen, you know, teachers or staff participating. So it's have, again, that sense of community and the staff being amazing is a big part of that. Um, following on the special education, you know, learning that at the retirement um, ceremony that, that a lot of the special students were brought back to PG. I mean, I think that's a really powerful thing as well, that there was an interest in, in making sure there's um, a program for many folks there. Mm -hmm. I'd like to say our district handled COVID better than many other districts would have been able to, possibly during due to our nimbleness and the size. But you know that it gives me some hope that in when the next disruption happens, we'll be able to respond more quickly. And then I'll just mention, since we're bragging, you know, that we did have a blue ribbon school. I think it was two years ago with um, Robert Down um, making that list. So you know we are hitting a lot of the boxes um, for sure. Okay, thank you. And thank you for talking about the board because that is typically the first question sure. Candace gonna ask. Tell us about the board and we can co-sign that with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We can. Okay, last question or prompt is, what are some of the areas of concern or questions or areas of improvement that you have? Trustee Otmar? This one was a little difficult for me because it's it's easy to see the bright spots. Um, and sometimes it's harder to dig into the things that you feel like might be missing. Um, you can come back to me for this. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Sure. Trustee Bryant. Um, I think one of the more troubling ones is that there's a there is an I don't know how to refer to it even there is you know there's always been not always but there's been it's kind of uh, underlying chatter about pacific grove being a racist community and you hear that sometimes and some of the things even that we've seen happen have been very very disturbing um and and in our attempts to address it we didn't always address it in the best way either um i think it's difficult as a board in doing that sometimes too because you're trying to have this discussion with the public and people are upset and rightfully so about um things that had happened um and some of this stuff goes back to the uh the fishing village the chinese fishing village even it's like those are things that happen in this town that um, that you continue to hear that talk about Pacific Grove. And, you know, I would say, I would argue that we're not a racist community, but that we've had things that were racist that happened here and that I think still continue to happen that we need to address. And we're such a, not, it doesn't matter how big or small the community is, it's not right, but um, we have to figure out effective ways to deal with that. And that's something that um, always feels like it's lying there in the background. Um, and I'm not entirely sure how we deal with it. Um, so there's that. Um, I'm gonna think about it and make the rounds and I'm gonna see if I have anything else, but that's the one that pops into my head first and foremost, the most troubling one. Okay, uh, technically I'm next on the list, so I won't let myself get off the hook. I'll put myself on the hook. Um, so we have two elementary schools that we have struggled for since before Beth was on the board. So I don't know, 20 years, for I don't decades we've struggled to um, have. So right now we have like, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. We have two elementary schools. One is kind of, one is a blue ribbon, one wins the blue ribbon school. One, mm, the gutters are falling apart. And so it's kind of like, what is going on? So that's that will be my example for the evening. Um, safety, 
I would love to see, um, but I mean, I say that, but we literally just at our last board meeting approved this really robust safety evaluation plan for $154,000. Um, I guess, I don't even think it's appropriate for me to say, but I mean, I would say I'm disappointed it took this long, but it's here now. So we're moving on, right? Like they're going to do it and we're going to review that. That's good. Um, I think uh, ha having some data-based measurable goals is something that we're lacking, but that's why we're looking for it moving forward. Um, and um, that's all I have for now. So Dr. Hazen. Yeah, I, again, will echo a lot of what has been said. I mean, I think that the diversity, equity, inclusion piece is something the district's working on. And I think there will be strengths when that, that plan is fully um, put into practice, but it's something we I think we could do better with. I mentioned we're well-funded, but I think we could do better in spending money. It would be, I'd be really curious to explore a little more kind of, you know, where we might be spending too much or too little. Again, there is some, the ABM we had at the last board meeting presentation gives us some hope that we'll be targeting particularly utilities for that. So it, again, there, this points to the responsiveness potentially of our district to needs um, as a positive. The equity among school sites is a huge one, and this is not equity in just, you know, in um, DEI type terms, but in terms of, you know, how do we make sure that that all kids are given the same opportunity when you have two separate elementary schools? That's something that I think is exactly as was said very eloquently by uh, President Carroll and something that is often bubbling up and needs to be addressed. Um, it would, you know, it needs to be addressed holistically moving forward, I think. Um, I Two post-COVID ones, I'd say, is providing appropriate challenges for higher performing students. That's something that I would like to see more growth in. And we tend to always measure to the mean rather than saying like, are those higher performing students getting the challenges that they need to also be their best. Um, and then another post COVID is really wanting our kids to feel part of the community. I mean, that was something that came up, I think, in the LCAP presentation. But I think there is a loss of the kids feeling that the school is their school, is that it is meeting their needs, et cetera. And I would love to, you know, that's something I would love to have a new superintendent also help us work on. I was engrossed in that. Uh, Clerk McNary. Um, I think I will not repeat the ones that have been said, but another one that I think we have a need for is um, communication with all of our ed educational partners. Um, I don't mean quantity, I mean quality and meaningfulness. And I think um, speaking to the measurability factor, you know, as an example, we send out a newsletter at the end of every week. I have no idea how many people look at that or if the information is digestible or understandable. So I think ways to know um, someone who values being able to communicate with every front one from community members to staff, to the district office staff, to the board, um, and also has a vision for how to communicate out about PGUSD. You know, we have an exceptional district with awesome staff and students who are doing wonderful things. And I feel like we have a gap between the great things we are doing and the information that's being shared out about what they're doing. Um, you know, the things we're doing with our bond money, how is that being distributed to the community? I think there's a real need um, for engagement in that regard. And thank you for bringing up the, the racism issues, because that is a big one that we need to tackle. Trustee Otmar? Wow. You guys all covered so many things. The only thing that I'm um, left thinking about is um, one of the points I was saying was important for me in the search was um, the social emotional support of students, I feel like, and staff, I feel like that is missing here. Not void, but it could be, there could be more of it. Um, I know that it, it, many of the school sites, I've read emails that there's bullying going on and um, exclusion and things of that nature. I think, um, I think that that's something in our district. And that also comes with possibly like Twitter, 
social media, social isolation, things like that. So how we work on that, I don't know, but um, it's definitely a space that we could improve upon. I have one more. Sure. So, and this isn't a bad bad thing so much because it's not, it's like something I think that we just want to see more of and we're addressing it even is like, as wonderful as the community is, um, uh, I don't feel like the district is super, super connected with the business in Pacific Grove, what happens where the money gets spent, you know, and I think about it's like, to me, at least, you know, the, the school and the district and the students and those families, it's like, that's the heartbeat of this town. And um, although I'm seldom at a city council meeting, I, they, I don't see them here either. Maybe they're watching. They're not watching because I see who's watching. I wish we were, and we're taking steps towards trying to make that happen more. I wish we were uh, just more together with what's happening with city council and chamber of commerce because we have great stories here and great restaurants and all that stuff too. I would just like to see we have so much more potential. It's a great town, but we could be even greater. And I would love that. I would love to, it's like, I mean, I don't know where, where do kids hang out on a Friday night in PG? I don't think there's any, it's like, where is that? You right, know? Aid. Huh? Yeah, right Aid and Country Club. Yeah. Spot. You know, Speaking like, as a parent. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, I would just, and part of that is, you know, I, I grew up in a little suburb and we had a place that where we, we hung out and that was a million years ago. Maybe that doesn't exist. Maybe everybody lives online Friday and Saturday night now, but I, you know, our, what do they call us? America's last hometown and butterfly USA. And it's like, we kind of, we kind of are that, you know, and the butterflies came back and then maybe we can bring the other part of that or, or just make that more robust to I'm old fashioned that way. I would like to see that as something that we have more of. You know, I mean, I live right across the street. So one of the highlights of my day is when I come downstairs from my office and I'm making lunch and I hear the kids playing out there. That's my favorite part of the day. You see them running around and it's like, that's great. It's a great town. So just wanted to add that. If I could take that one and turn it one into a positive is one thing that I've been impressed with. And I don't have this experience with other districts. So I may just be missing it, but our businesses support the schools like for PTA dine outs and fundraisers and amazingly well. And again, this speaks to that community, but your point on the community space for the kids of PG, like that is something that we, I think a lot of towns struggle with, but in this digital age, I would love to see that be an effort that we address, we address as well in collaboration with the city. So that was well put. Mm -hmm. It's 7.49, boo, and we are going to go to public comment, and Beth has some public comment. Uh, Lewis, anyone online wanting to public comment? If there is anyone listening online, please do raise your digital hand. Go ahead, Beth. Um, <clears throat> well, the things we're good at, it wasn't mentioned, but we, we are heavily invested in counseling. We've always had more counselors for kids than any other district in this county. So uh, we believe in counseling and uh, we've, we've taken steps to um, improve their salaries, their hours. So that's, that is uh, a culture of this district. Um, we also have loyalty to this district. So past, you know, um, students come back and they teach or they help or, you know, so there's that uh, loyalty that uh, people like my daughter bleed red and gold. Um, and then on the, what, what needs to be addressed is um, a continual kind of declining enrollment. And especially from my point of view, the high school is the one that suffers the most from that. The elementary schools can manage that. Um, but the high school, in terms of keeping a comprehensive high school, you have to have a certain number of students. And when we start to get to 500, you know, you're, you're getting a little in a scary area as far as being able to offer what students expect nowadays. We compete with private schools. 
that's what we do. So, and we do a good job. We really do, but we don't advertise that enough. We don't promote ourselves enough. Um, so, uh, but that's what I see as something that a, a future superintendent I'd like really to see address uh, the declining enrollment at the high school level. Thank you so much, Beth, for spending your evening here tonight. Um, I'll hand it back over to you unless there's any trustee who would like to further comment. Okay. Well, we want to thank you so much for this evening. It looks like we're going to hit, hit it right on the nose in terms of our time frame. Um, we will be getting you an, a, an updated timeline mm -hmm. in the next two days. So that was thank the one we'll get back to you. I look forward to getting the uh, salary uh, range for the contract parameters. We'll be sending you some updates along the way, particularly once we begin the process of publicizing. We'll give you some uh, feedback as the online survey goes out. We'll kind of give you an update to say, you know, right now we've got 314 people who've responded, 17 were teachers, some parents, et cetera, just kind of give you a sense of ongoing updates with the data versus waiting to the, the summative aspect of it along the way. So we'll be doing some of those things. We will not be putting in what the trends are at that time because we want to wait until uh, we get the final uh, documents, the final responses before we do that. But we can give you a number of people who've responded. We'll also be working with you to get the languages that will be needed to do some of the translation for the online surveys as well. Mm -hmm. And so those things will be bringing back to you. Please, sure. you have plenty of time. Um, in terms of, um, we have an area for requirements for the position. Do you have a requirement for a top in your um, administrative credential? Do you want a master's yet? Is there any interest in requiring a doctorate? Mm -hmm. California experience important or not? Good question. Uh, Trustee Brian Swanson, you want to start? Um, well, yeah, I I do, but I don't want it to necessarily limit the, you know, because again, it's like, we're, yeah, this would be best of all possible worlds, but if you get somebody who's a real rock star and they don't have that, I don't want that to be the filter either, you know. Written preferred. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so yeah eliminate well then if that if that was the case yeah preferred i mean personally i prefer somebody at least with a master's degree and and um admin credentials i'd prefer somebody who has teaching experience in the past um you know i think those are uh at least off the top of my head the mm -hmm. first three mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. that would be yeah, so. Um, um, <clears throat> so next is myself on the list. Um, so I, I hesitate to say this because I don't want to sound like I have bias or, or and maybe it is a bias, but I feel like a California candidate would serve us better. But I think that I'm being naive in saying that as well because it's possible somebody from outside could serve us just as good. But um in my own informal observations of surrounding districts, seems like when they get superintendents from outside California, the learning curve is steep and the embrace, em, the embracing of their community just doesn't seem to happen. And I'm not saying that would happen here, but it it does make me oof, like a little bit, you know. Um, also, of course, state of California has their specifics. And so someone having knowledge surrounding those does seem like they would hit the ground running, but um. Obviously, you recruit from other states, and that was successful sometimes or most of the time. So, um, so yeah, so I guess I would lean towards California search, but um, but acknowledging that that could be my own naivete on that. Uh, Dr. Hazen, I, I had the same. I, mean, I think I feel strongly that we should not have requirements, but desire to preferred qualifications. The California experience was kind of the top of my list, at least the familiarity with again with the California Ed Code and understanding you know, how best to do that. Um, you know, I personally, again, um, well, I, I would love to see someone with a doctorate in, again, not as a requirement, but someone who is actually dedicated to the field of, um, you know, pedagog pedagogy, just be able to say like what works for learning and what doesn't, it would be something that would be a positive for me. 
I will say the same, like bilingual, that was something that was brought up earlier, is get is not a requirement, but having that for our community is, I think, really important. Um, and yeah, I think those I think those are the big ones. I don't think prior super, um, superintendent experience is a requirement to me, but I do like the idea of some level of either acting or assistant superintendent experience or, you know, some at least leadership position would be useful. We typically say cabinet level experience. So that means they're at the desk and the decision making aspect of things. I would embrace cabinet level experience wording. Yeah. Would the rest of us embrace that wording? Yes. And I will say, I mean, I do like the classroom point though, too. I mean, I, we're kind of highlighting maybe a super person that doesn't actually exist. I'm sure they do. But, you know, being able to have someone that has that, it's really hard, I think, to meet the needs of the teachers without having spent, you know, some time in the trenches. Not to make that an appropriate analogy, but. Uh, let's see. Clerk McNary. Yeah, I agree with what's been said. Um... I guess I'm not necessarily stuck with someone who has classroom experience, given we are just um, approved a contract for an interim superintendent who um, does not have that background, who I think is fully competent and kind of has his beat, his, what do you say, finger to the pulse? Is that the right mm -hmm. adage? Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyways, he seems to be really um, in touch with the teachers and um, making connections in those relationships without that experience. Um, I do see the value in it though, 100%. Um, I think I share the same kind of thought about someone with California experience, just given, or California knowledge, just given um, where we're at. Um, and I um, agree with the preferred versus required language. Mm -hmm. uh, Trustee Atmar. Um, yes, to everything that everyone has said, I definitely would prefer uh, California experience, not necessarily knowledge, but experience because ed code is ed code. <laughs> and just knowing about it is different than having actually applied it and having a working knowledge of it. Um, somebody that is credentialed, um, admin, um, I don't know that a doctorate is necessary. I see what you're saying though. It does show a dedication. Um, a master's, yes. Um, I would love to see somebody that has been a teacher. And I think that that would really create in our district sort of a sense of unity to know that your superintendent has been in your shoes. I think that that's, I think it makes a difference. Um, yep, that's all I got. Thank you. Um, I guess we can just uh, jump and see if anyone is on uh, online who would like to comment on that or anyone in person who would like to say anything? Okay, Beth agrees in the public record. She says she- Bilingual, I and forgot that, yeah. You like the bilingual. Mm -hmm. And bi yeah. bilingual in a specific language or? Preferably Spanish and English bilingual. because of our population. I think that that's important for our community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so with that. That's it. <laughs> it. All right, 7.59, I will say meeting, meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much. No, just saying thank you. Did you have something? Just to say thank you. Just to say thank you. Thank you guys. So it much. is now eight o'clock, so it's perfect. Thank you. <laughs>